tomorrow, Wallace Beery, Jackie Cooper, and Treasure Island, and it could be your day for some treasure, $16,000 worth. So tomorrow, watch to win. We hope you have a nice night, and tomorrow, I hope you meet me right back here at the $16,000 movie. Good evening, I'm Karen Hart. And I'm Nolan Johannes. Tonight in the news. A contract vote that could end the Mercy Hospital strike. I'm Mark Davis. I'll have a live report coming up. I'm Dan Fiorucci. I'll tell you why the space shuttle hasn't come down yet. Those stories and more next on Newswatch 16. The U.S. versus the USSR in pre-Olympic hockey tomorrow. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is Newswatch 16. Good evening. We have a lot of news for you tonight, but one of the most important news events of the day is about to take place. The Space Shuttle Columbia was supposed to land this morning at Edwards Air Force Base in California, but computer problems delayed that landing, and the shuttle is now expected to come back to Earth within the next hour. A native of Monroe County is part of Columbia's crew. And of course, News Watch 16 and ABC News will give you full coverage of this big event. Nolan? The big story, Karen, down here on Earth tonight is a vote being taken right now. Striking workers at the Wilkes-Barre Mercy Hospital are voting on a new contract proposal hammered out earlier this morning. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis is live now in Plains Township with more on that. Mark? No, and we're at the Operating Engineers Hall in Plains Township. Now, the contract vote for the unionized Mercy Hospital workers is going on right down these stairs and around the corner. You may be able to hear some of the applause in the background. It's been going on since about quarter after five this evening when the workers started gathering here. We have some pictures of those workers as they started showing up here tonight to vote on this contract offer. There you see some of the workers coming in. Now, many of the more than 500 unionized workers from Mercy Hospital, nurses, technicians, and maintenance personnel are here voting on a contract offer that was hammered out very, very early this morning. Morning. It's a contract that would end the 19-day-old strike, the first strike in hospital history. Now, as I said, this strike, this contract that was uh, is being voted on as we speak was hammered out very, very early this morning. There was only one television news reporter there when the contract was hammered out, and that was Bob Constantini. Bob, what was it like early this morning when it was finally looked like it was settled? Mark, when the negotiations started early last evening, uh, there didn't seem to be any indication that a contract settlement might be reached. In fact, the mediator told me he didn't think that they would get through all the issues, even if the session went well into the night. The negotiations lasted for nearly 10 hours, with federal mediator Charles McHugh shuttling back and forth between two rooms where hospital negotiators and union leaders were meeting separately. As the night wore on, the mood became much more positive, much more friendly. And Newswatch 16 was the only TV news crew there around 3.30 when word of a settlement came out. Both sides would not comment on details of the tentative agreement. It would be inappropriate for us to comment on the, uh, the content of the agreement because our members don't know what's in it. But uh, are you as negotiators pretty much satisfied? Yes, we're going to recommend it. Yeah, we've been told the uh, committee is going to rep recommend it uh, to the membership for ratification. And I think with that kind of recommendation, we can expect that it will be ratified. To end the long night, hospital negotiators walked down the hall for a small celebration with union leaders. With Christmas coming, the unionized employees who were there last night said they were quite anxious to get back to work, and uh, that's why they're taking the vote here so quickly this evening. Well, Bob, if that was the mood last night, the mood today on the picket line at Mercy Hospital was decidedly different than it had been for the last nearly three weeks, and the workers were anxious to take this contract vote and to get back to work. For nurses Betty Watinsky of Wilkesbury, Antoinette Smith of Wilkesbury Township, and Christine Sobolski of Nanticoke, it's been a hard 19 days spending four hours each and every afternoon here on the picket line in front of Mercy Hospital. Today was supposed to be payday, and with Christmas only a few weeks away, all three are looking forward to getting back to work and again making a living. Just great to know that we're going back to work. Happy that they could get this thing settled and over with and uh... I'll be glad when I get called back. 
Well, I'm last on the list to be called back, so as long as I get an unemployment check or something, that's just worth it to me. Now, we're told that the workers who are not called back immediately will be able to file for unemployment and may get some checks to tide them over until everyone is called back. And the people who are called back immediately could start as early as tomorrow. And, of course, they would have another paycheck between now and Christmas. The vote is still going on, and we'll have the latest for you if it breaks between now and the end of our newscast. If not, we'll have it for you at 11. I'm Mark Davis with Bob Constantini, live in Plains Township. Karen, Nolan? Mark, one other question. Um, when will all the workers be called back? Karen, it could be, as I was told today by hospital officials, months before all 529 workers are called back. The hospital is saying tonight that if this contract is ratified, then they would call back about 20 beginning tomorrow, and gradually everyone would be called back, but the whole process could take several months. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. There's word of still another company union contract agreement tonight, this one with a major airline, Eastern Airlines, and its three unions have been talking about concessions that would, in the airline's words, keep it from financial collapse. The pact, according to a union spokesman, calls for wage reductions in return for giving the workers 25% control of the company's stock. Eastern says so far this year they have lost almost $130 million. We now understand that the votes have been counted in that strike by Wilkes-Barre Mercy Hospital. Workers. News Watch 16's Mark Davis is standing by. I take it that cheer you heard earlier was significant, Mark. Yes, that was significant, Nolan. The strike at Wilkes-Barre's Mercy Hospital is now officially over. As you can hear, as you can hear, many of the uh, striking workers are behind me. In fact, it was so overwhelming there wasn't even a secret ballot taken. It was done on voice vote, and I'm told by the union people that were in there when the vote was taken, it was overwhelming. And our Bob Constantini is here with one of the union members right now to briefly tell us what happened inside. Bob? Okay, Mark. With me now is Carol Whetstone, uh, who is a licensed practical nurse at Mercy Hospital. Carol, how do you feel right now? I think we're all very happy with the contract and very anxious to get back to work. And uh, do you have any idea how soon you might be getting back to work? Well, I'm hoping within the next week. <laughs> Did you feel that you got a good contract out of all this? Yes, I do. Uh, any specifics that you liked? Well, I think the job security was the thing we were after, and I think we got it, and we're very happy with it. Okay, thank you very much. That's the opinion of one of the unionized members. The strike at Mercy Hospital is over. Karen and Nolan? Okay, and we'll have details of that, of course, Bob, tonight on our update report. In less than an hour, the Space Shuttle Columbia is expected to return to Earth after spending 10 days in outer space. We told you earlier in our newscast that the landing was delayed because of computer problems aboard the Columbia. Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci took Skycam 16 to Bucknell University today to find out why a computer can have such a major event. And the problem cropped up early this morning when astronaut John Young fired a thruster or steering rocket aboard the shuttle. For some reason, the firing caused two of the five flight computers on board Columbia to fail, and that caused a temporary scrub of the landing. As you know, the computers control the engines and the flight path of the space shuttle. Professor Maurice Aberdeen is a computer expert and former space scientist who teaches at Bucknell University in Lewisburg. So the computer is an integral part of the loop. We have man computer engines. To understand the shuttle computer problem, think of Skycam 16. Pilots like Jack Rulin fly conventional planes and helicopters using hand controllers and foot pedals. They are the direct links that steer the aircraft. But on the space shuttle, it's not quite that simple. On the shuttle, the hand controller isn't hooked up directly to the outside control surfaces. It's hooked up to the onboard computer. And so even when an astronaut is at the controls, it's the computer that's steering the spaceship. With the computer, an astronaut can guide the shuttle to a graceful landing. But without it, Columbia would tumble out of control like a punted football. If a uh, part of your steering mechanism fails, you cannot control your automobile. And the computer, uh, if it fails, then you cannot control your, spa uh, your spacecraft. For 270 knots. And so that's why when two out of five onboard computers failed this morning, NASA delayed the landing. Past experience has shown that prudence always pays off. Three, touchdown. Uh, welcome home. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16. For the last five weeks, we've been reporting on the problems of asbestos in the A.T. Howells Middle School in the North Pocono School District. This week, we've been looking into the validity of tests used to sample asbestos levels in the school and whether more reliable tests could have been performed. 
But last night at 11 o'clock, we aired a story that was misleading. To set the record straight, school officials have told Newswatch 16 that they were acting in good faith and under the advice of a private testing firm when they ordered their tests. School officials also assure us that if further tests are needed, they will be made. Superintendent John Buscarini says the school board is trying to handle the asbestos problem the best way possible, despite a lack of guidance from the EPA. It was incorrect for us to say that North Pocono school officials made a mistake when they ordered those tests, or that officials were trying to save money on the tests they did order. We certainly regret that error, and we're happy now to take time to set the record straight. And Newswatch 16 continues with a fire that levels a frat house at Bucknell. And our chief meteorologist, Tom Clark, is standing by to comment on today's weather. How about uh, Just about perfect I for like December. Sure no was. complaints today, a beautiful right. day, and we'll find out if it's going to continue for tomorrow. Join me in the backyard when we come back. fraternity house on the campus of Bucknell University lies in ruins tonight. This is all that's left of the Lambda Chi Alpha House, seen here from Skycam 16 on the Lewisburg College campus. The $300,000 fire broke out sometime during the night, but the building was empty at the time. Lambda Chi's are in the process of reorganizing at Bucknell. Their job is now a little more difficult. We were planning to bring you a, re a report on air tests done at an old Forge landfill, but because of the break in the Mercy Hospital strike story, we don't have time to bring that to you right now. We hope to have that report from Bob Reynolds on Newswatch 16 Update at 11. Now let's go out to the backyard and check in with Tom Clark. What's it like out there, Tom? Okay, Karen, it's tranquil and plenty cold. One of those nights where you wouldn't want to be outside with a bathing suit on, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we had sunshine today, but now it's uh, rather cloudy overhead. And we'll look at the readings in uh, just a moment. Tonight's uh, Newswatch 16 Holiday House is over in Wilkesbury. Let's have a look at it. There it is there, electrified for the season. It belongs to Harry and Sarah Thomas. And they live at 141 Lehigh Street in Wilkesbury. And they have lights not only on the first and second floors, but up on the third floor, as you can see right there. A job well done. Okay, it is 30 outside now. The humidity is 42%. We have winds very light from the south, and the barometer is rising. The high today in this backyard, uh, 34 degrees was the maximum temperature. The low last night, 27. Normals, 38 and 25 for this time of year. And the record high was set three years ago, 61 degrees. The record low set way back, 1906, six above. That's cold. Let's go to the West Coast view. I want to show you Southern California, right about down to the south there. There it is right there. And that's where the uh, space shuttle will be landing within the hour. And the weather's quite nice. Sunshine down there right now. The latest report that came in at 6 o'clock, winds under 15 miles per hour. Temperatures right about, well, in the low 70s. So very favorable weather conditions for the landing of the shuttle uh, within the hour. Now here's what we have over Pennsylvania. A weak storm system tried to push some snow into the eastern counties today. Didn't quite make it. The storm kind of fizzled out and we had all that sunshine instead. But snowing lightly now over most of western Pennsylvania and some cloudiness now moving over Pennsylvania eastern counties now. Nothing more than a few flakes here tonight. Now go to the west. There's another weak storm system right there. It is racing eastward. It will cloud us up again tomorrow and we will see just some snow flurries, nothing heavy uh, this time around once again, but there's plenty cold air up here. It is now zero at Hibbing, Minnesota, and they'll go down to about 10 below tonight, but that really cold air will stay to our north as the jet stream is blowing from west to east, which does not allow any cold air to come down from Canada into Pennsylvania. A storm system out in the Pacific could move in here over the weekend and bring us a more important threat of precipitation late Sunday into Monday, but no serious weather coming in over the next couple of days. Now here's the forecast for tonight. Just a few clouds overhead, uh, just a flake or two over the mountains, but plenty cold tonight. 20 up there in Factoryville for the low tonight. How about Hazleton? 19 degrees. Hazleton uh, in the higher elevations of the Pocono Plateau, a cold spot. How about Higgins down in Schuylkill County? 23 the low and 23 
in Hughesville. You're low out there tomorrow morning. Here's what we have for Friday. A cold day, temperatures holding in the 30s, gray skies, and some snow flurries. Maybe an inch or less in the northern counties, but most of it's just a few flakes. That's about it. 35 Old Forge, 39 in Palmerton, and Espy, 37 the high tomorrow. Take a look at your health watch. Reflexes, concentration, mood, average, but some dampness coming in tomorrow with that weak storm and uh, cold conditions, resistance to aches and pains. Whoa, tomorrow, take it easy. Partly cloudy tonight, 23, the low, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton. Cloudy tomorrow, a couple of snow flurries, 35. Saturday looks good. Plenty of sunshine, a dry day, 37 degrees, and clouding up on Sunday. A little bit of sleet or rain coming in Sunday night and Monday as I see it now. But uh, kind of gray tomorrow, guys, okay? Well, that's okay. all right. We've got to take a little gray. A little gray with the blue. Well, I've been putting up with gray for quite a few years, now, <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> Next, Joe Zone with sports. Tonight, Joe goes to the gridiron to find the sports star of the week. <laughs> The next big event on NEP, the Pottsville Winter Carnival Parade. WNEP-TV will bring you live, colorful, and exclusive coverage of Pottsville's annual extravaganza. Marching bands, floats, and cartoon characters of all kinds will parade down the streets of Pottsville in grand holiday style. So come on out to Pottsville's Big Winter Carnival Parade, and if you can't come out, you can watch it live and exclusive, beginning at 1.30 Saturday, right here only on WNEP 16. They had quite a celebration at Berwick High School this morning. Early this morning, the whole school turned out to officially congratulate the Eastern Conference Class A champs and the number one high school football team in America. I was there, too, to present Coach George Curry and his players with the WNEP-TV 6 seed number one trophy. It goes to the team that we have ranked number one at the end of the season. Berwick is the first team since we've been ranking to stay at the top since the first week of the season. You know what? The Bulldogs might not even been champs if not for the play of quarterback Bo Orlando. There was no doubt on Saturday that Orlando was taking this championship rather personally. One word, Joe. Franchise. Berwick is a team of quality players. Three All-State kids, 2,000-yard rushers, and still Joe Orlando stands out so much that his coach calls him Franchise. Saturday in the Eastern Conference Championship game against North Pocono, he threw three touchdown passes and ran for another. In all, he completed 7 of 10 for 112 yards. Add another 82 yards rushing on 10 carries, throw in a recovered fumble and a touchdown saving tackle, and you've got an idea why Bo Orlando was an overwhelming choice for Sports Star of the Week. Joe is without a doubt one of the quickest football players I've ever seen as an athlete and as a coach. i never seen a kid run that quick. I mean, you know, I've seen sprinters run nine fives and nine sevens, but i never seen a kid run as quick, you know, get the corner and just change directions and start and stop. Did you have any specific goals going in? I know, obviously, that, you know, the bottom line was to win, but what, what, did you want to show anybody anything or did you just want to show yourself something? It was your last game as a senior here. What was going through your mind? Well, you know, I. I wanted to prove something to everybody, and I'm sure the rest of the guys that on the team that everybody's saying we're overrated. You know, maybe, you know, you can't tell about the ratings in the USA, but we just wanted to show everybody that we're a good football team. As the man who sort of led the way for Berwick in the championship game, we present you with the WNEP TV Sports Star of the Week trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. And the sports star runners-up this week, Earl Greer, East Stroudsburg, Mark Graves of Williamsport, and Myron Brown of Ulster. Now, if you're a high school basketball nut and you're looking for a place to camp out for the night, the Scranton CYC is a great one. The Bishops Tournament is scheduled tonight. If you get there pretty soon, you can see three games. First up will be the matchup between Bishop O'Hara and Pocono Central Catholic. They were the losers in last night's games. They will be followed by... Bishops Newman and Bishops Hoban, winners last night. And the third game tonight has Bishop O'Reilly against Bishop Hannon. Those teams will be making their first appearance at the tournament. The winners of those last two games tonight will play for the championship on Saturday and Sunday night. You can see the highlights of that title game, 11.30 p.m., a special half-hour show right here on 16. Don't forget tonight, Wilkes and Kings. That is always a great basketball game. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot. I'll see you at 11 with the sports screen. Hmm. Any okay. predictions on the Wilkes Kings yeah. game? Uh -uh. No, oh, no come predictions. On. That's no. no. Why not? I think the Wilkesbury team will win it. <laughs> Thanks, Joe.
<laughs> All right, and that's the way to do it. <laughs> News Watch 16 continues with a spirit of light. It's a way that you can help the needy have a brighter Christmas. Everything from white water to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to whitetails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the eagles, browns, bears, or giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. And finally tonight, this is the season for giving. And in Wilkesbury, a group called the Spirit of Light is asking people in the Wyoming Valley to give so those who are less fortunate will have a merrier Christmas. The group will be collecting non-perishable food on Public Square in Wilkesbury on Sunday at around noon. Last year, more than three tons of food was collected, but the need is said to be even greater this year. There's an 87% increase in need. 87%. That's hard to believe, but that's true. The food will go to needy people all over the Wyoming Valley and will be distributed by the Salvation Army and Luzerne County's Commission on Economic Opportunity. And that's News Watch 16 for this Thursday. World News Tonight is next with the latest on the shuttle. For the team, thank you for being with us. We'll see you tonight on the update. Enjoy your evening.